if we do a close inspection on the JSON API specification, we will notice that there are four resources, or sorry, four endpoints for each resource. Uh, one being the individual record that we have seen, uh, which is when we requested a single article, for instance. Another one for the article's resource would be um, the collections endpoint, uh, which gives us a list of articles uh, that are available. Two extra uh, endpoints in there are related to relationships. So uh, in here you can see how you can uh, select relationships for a given article. Um, and to do that you only need to add the keyword relationships and then the name of the relationship after that. Um, so uh, what it will give you is a response with just the relationships. Uh, as you can see this is very similar as to having a sparse field set that only adds the the relationship. Um, so let's let's inspect how how that looks like. Uh, this is what uh, the article looks like. Uh, we've seen this before, and now uh, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna remove this. I don't need this. Um, I'm gonna do fields, node article, and then field tags. Do this. So this is basically uh, what the response looks like. Uh, you can see that you get uh, type and ID for the article, and then the field tags, and then the, the related links. Um, so this is very similar to what uh, we will get if we do relationships, field tags. Um, the only thing is that now the target is not an article anymore but the target is relationships so that doesn't have a type and an id um, instead what we get is an array of the the relationships themselves uh, you may think that uh, this is not very useful um, but uh, and i may agree that uh, it is not for the get method uh, but when you need to create a relationship between a particular article and some other tag, uh, you can post to this endpoint, the, this endpoint being this ID relationship field tags, and then a relationship gets created between this and whatever relationship you, you send, and the same if you need to alter the relationships. Um, so this, this is going to be useful in the future for that. Uh, another nice thing is that if you omit the relationships, keyword in here, uh, what you will get is instead of getting the resource linkage object, uh, which is uh, what this is called in the JSON API specification lingo, uh, you will get the, um, uh, the included payloads in this. So this would be, when we do this, we're saying, give me the article, this particular article, and from there, give me all of the tags, and it this will give you as if you were making a collections request for for the tags, taxonomy term tags, resource, and filtering by this article. Uh, so this is uh, this is very this is very obvious and nice because uh, this syntax is kind of very um, very intuitive because it kind of gives you the the path down. So we do this, we're going to get a collection of two different taxonomy term tags. And you can see the difference how uh, the other time we only get the with the relationships in between, relationships keyword in between. Here, we only get the type and ID, but now we get the, the full resource in, in there. And we can operate normally with this. Uh, we could do sparse field sets, we could do um, includes, uh, and everything that you would expect from, from a collection. Uh, so yeah, these are the two extra endpoints that we have for, for a resource, and they probably make more sense if you think about them in the context of the other HTTP verbs, uh, but you can also get them 